And uh, today we will have a look at how you can build uh, great diagrams with uh, Serious Web. So uh, first of all, a very simple uh, explanation of what is uh, Serious Web. So for more information on Serious Web, you can go on the official website or directly on GitHub. You'll find uh, everything uh, related uh, to the project, including uh, some uh, videos uh, and uh, more uh, screenshots and all of the code, of course, on uh, GitHub. So um, Serious Web is uh, an open source uh, project of the Eclipse Foundation. It uh, allows you to build web-based modeling workbenches where you can define your concept, specify how they will be uh, displayed and how you can interact with uh, them. And then you can just start uh, editing and manipulating them. So here's a small screenshot showing how you can define the concept that uh, you want to manipulate directly in your web browser. Then you can define how to view them and how to interact with them. So we'll see that uh, in uh, details in a couple of minutes. And finally, you can give a link to your end users to let them uh, start playing with uh, your diagrams. So today we will only talk about serious web diagrams, but it's uh, the main part of serious web. So we will have uh, quite a lot to talk about. So uh, during this presentation, we will have a look at all the diagram elements that you can uh, define and uh, manipulate, how you can configure their appearance and style, how you uh, can navigate in your diagram. Uh, we'll see how to share uh, a diagram to invite uh, other people to participate and uh, edit the diagram with you. We will have a look at all the options for the layout of the diagram. And finally, what you can do in terms of uh, interaction uh, to create new elements, to edit them, and so on. So first of all, what can you display in a serious web diagram? Well, we have two main concepts in uh, serious web diagrams, nodes and edges. A node, you can um, define how uh, its uh, label will be displayed. Do you want a label inside of a node, outside of a node, or both? You can also define how um, the kind of child nodes or border nodes that uh, you will have, and you will be able to specify how they will appear. So for example, the child node, uh, you will be able to select if you want them as a list or just as regular node um, inside of uh, their parents. For edges, you have um, you, you don't have as many options uh, to configure them, but one of the key parts that you can configure is, for example, the labels of uh, the edges. Do you want to label them at the beginning, the end, or in the center, or all three uh, labels? In terms of styling, you have also tons of options. You can uh, specify if you want a, just a rectangle for your node, or if you want an image, you can configure the background, border, color, sizes, uh, the position of the label, as I said before. Uh, most of these options can be configured using expressions. So the configuration can be dynamic depending on the object uh, represented by the node. Same thing for the edges. You can customize the color, the width, uh, the style of the edges. And with the conditional styles, you can create uh, diagrams that are uh, very uh, dynamic and which can react to everything you do. So I did not have any uh, inspiration for the topic of the presentation. So I let my four-year-old pick the subject. And today, we will create a Pokemon diagram. So first of all, I've created a definition of uh, my diagram here. And I will show you what you can express inside this diagram description. So here. I have uh, just one kind of diagram. I could add uh, multiple kind of diagrams or other uh, kind of representation. 
And I have just my uh, color palette with uh, the various uh, color that I will use uh, for my elements. Inside of my diagram, I don't have tons of concept, but I have uh, the region, which can contain arenas and Pokemons. I also have trainers, which can have uh, Pokeballs. Uh, a trainer can also be related to a team of Pokemons. And a trainer can have a Pokedex, which lists all the species encountered by the trainer. So all these uh, nodes have um, different uh, configuration. Some of them, like the region, are using just a rectangle uh, to be displayed. But the trainer are using an image here. So if I zoom out and click, you can see here what the image will uh, look like. Uh, I also have conditional styles. So for example, my Pokeballs has a default style. But if I have a Great Ball, a Master Ball, or an Ultra Ball, I will have another image selected. So this is the default style. But this will be the style for the Ultra Ball. I've also uh, some elements like the region, which has a freeform layout. So the nodes will be uh, uh, free inside of uh, the region. But for the Pokedex, I will have here a list uh, layout. So I will have a list uh, of all the species of uh, Pokemon that uh, I have uh, encountered. For my edges, I've defined two edges, one from the trainer to the team. So I've just configured the edge uh, style and the color. So if we have a look at the configuration here, you can see that I've defined a begin label and end label, but not, uh, not any label for the center. It will go from the trainer to the Pokemon uh, teams. And I can just specify in my web browser how I will find elements to link with uh, these uh, edges. Uh, very easily. For the Pokedex, it will be a bit different. Uh, I will just have a label at the center, and uh, it will uh, use an expression to compute the label with Pokedex off and the name of uh, the trainer. So if we have a look at this in action, I've initialized a sample model with uh, two regions, uh, two trainers, and uh, uh, various teams and species of Pokemon. And if I start creating a first uh, diagram, you can see here my uh, two regions. In this, uh, in this representation, I have decided not to show all the model elements. Some of them are not uh, very relevant for what I want to uh, showcase today. And some of them are relevant. Uh, for example, the trainers, I will show them a bit later. But I don't want to show them all the time. I want to select when I want them to appear in the diagram. If you have uh, a very small amount of data inside of uh, a representation, you can select to, uh, to have everything synchronized and all the relevant uh, model elements will appear in the diagram. But as your uh, model grow bigger and bigger, uh, you, you may want to switch to an unsynchronized uh, strategy to just uh, see in the diagram what you have explicitly uh, selected. So here, if we have a look at uh, some of our diagrams element, you can see that I have a rectangle here for uh, the Cerulean city with an inside label, which has a small icon. But for the region, I have an outside label in uh, green with uh, its icon here. For the Pokemon, I have images with the outside label in uh, bold. So you can see the result of uh, all this uh, configuration that I've done in uh, the diagram description just before. 
In terms of navigation, we have a very small diagram now, but we will see how we can move inside uh, of it. So there are three main parts uh, for the uh, navigation with the diagram. So first of all, you can use uh, your trackpad or your mouse to move uh, as you like, but you also have the option, uh, various options to find uh, what you want quite easily. Sometimes you can get lost in a bit diagram. So for that, you have the fit to screen option to have a bird eye view of the whole diagram or just a part. We also zoom on uh, the selected element. If you change your selection, you can uh, find uh, very easily the element that you want. And you can, you can also display the diagram in full screen to everything uh, more easily. So here, if I start uh, selecting a region, you can see that we will zoom specifically on the selected element. If I don't select anything at all and use the fit to screen, I have a bird eye view of my uh, diagram. So if I'm a bit lost and I don't know uh, how to uh, restore the zoom on the diagram, I just have to click on this and uh, I can find my diagram elements quickly. And I also have the full screen mode to edit everything uh, without any uh, other uh, UI elements on the screen. So now that I've added a couple of elements in my diagram and uh, shown you how we can uh, move inside of the diagram, let's have a look at the various option to share it because you can uh, share the diagram with uh, another person and let them view uh, what you are uh, doing and uh, edit them uh, together. So you can share the URL of the representation uh, just with a simple click on uh, the toolbar. You can also download it as an SVG in order to embed it in uh, another um, document or another website. So if you have, uh, let's say, if you want to share the URL of the diagram, you can just copy it like that. After that, if you start moving elements, you can see that changes are visible in the other web browser uh, in real time. And if you want to uh, export the diagram in SVG, you just have to click here and then you'll have this uh, SVG file which embeds everything, all the images, uh, and uh, so on, and uh, you can reuse it anywhere you like. Okay, so now um, let's uh, move a bit uh, further and uh, let's try to make our diagram a bit more uh, beautiful uh, and uh, we'll change for that its layout. The layout in Serious Web can be parameterized by the specifier who will create the description of the diagram. So the specifier can, um, can tell us if some nodes should be resizable or not, how can they be resized, or um, if some nodes can be moved or not. There are a lot of options for that. But the end user will also be able to uh, configure uh, some uh, layout option by, uh, for example, marking some nodes are, uh, as pinned and uh, preventing them from being moved by anybody. So let's have a look. So here for uh, the region uh, which has uh, the Pokemon here, the region does not have uh, tons of option. It's just a freeform layout and anybody can uh, um, resize it or move it uh, any way they like. We have some expressions here uh, and some option to indicate uh, whether or not the node can be resized. Uh, the expected width and eighth that uh, the node should try to respect as much as possible. Uh, if you try, if you tell us that a node should be only um, 50 pixel by 50 pixel, but you create tons of child nodes inside, we will have to make it bigger. 
uh, whether or not uh, the aspect ratio should be um, uh, kept. And uh, you can also uh, specify if the node should be, for example, collapsed by default, which will hide uh, its children and make it a bit more uh, compact. So for example, here for the uh, Pokemon, I've decided that they should be uh, they should use a, a default uh, size and the aspect ratio is uh, kept at all time. So if I zoom in my diagram and if I try to resize uh, the region, I can resize it any way I'd like. But on the other hand, if I try to resize the Pokemon, you see that the aspect ratio uh, is uh, fixed in order to prevent any distortions of the image. I could also uh, pin uh, the, the Pokemon. And once it's pinned, I cannot move it uh, after that. And uh, you'll have to unpin it to be able to uh, change its position. So if you have uh, a layout that uh, you have fixed at uh, some part of your diagram, you can just pin all the element to ensure that we will not change uh, anything there. So uh, viewing the diagram is nice, but Interacting, it, interacting with the diagram is uh, necessary. So for that, the diagram uh, specifier has tons of options to define the behavior of uh, the representation. So as I said earlier, you can control what should appear on the diagram with unsynchronized and synchronized element. So let's have a look at that uh, first. So here, you see that the region, like uh, Kanto, with uh, its uh, arena and Pokémon, they appear directly in the diagram. But the trainers do not. The Pokédex do not appear uh, too, and the various teams also. So this is done because inside of my description, I've ensured that my my trainer is unsynchronized, and as such, it will not appear automatically in the diagram. I have to explicitly tell uh, Sirius Web when I want this uh, kind of object to appear in the diagram, and that's the same for the Pokédex and the team also. So in order to tell Sirius Web that I want this object to appear in the diagram, I can have created some tools so for example, here, I've created a tool to create a new trainer. So this tool will uh, create a trainer and then it will add it to the diagram. After that, it will create a Pokedex, create a team, add the team and add the Pokedex in the diagram too. So if we look at how it behaves, here I can click on this action to create my new trainer. And you can see here, up, if I update the layout, that it has created here in the Explorer, the trainer, the Pokedex, and the team, and added them inside of my diagram, contrary to my existing uh, trainers, uh, which are not here. I can also... Uh, control the visibility of my diagram element. So if I want to um, hide an element or just uh, make it a bit transparent or hide its children, it's very easy to do. So for example, Charmander, I can make it a bit uh, transparent. Uh, that one, I can uh, just uh, fade it too. I have control of these options. So here in uh, my uh, palette, for example, here for my trainer, I can select 
the object that will uh, appear and I can add some uh, tool to perform this action uh, directly. So I can programmatically uh, make an element disappear or uh, make it uh, uh, be collapsed. For that, if I want, for example, the regions uh, to be collapsible, I would have to select the option here. Otherwise, the end user will not be able to use it. And here I can specify if my elements are faded, hidden, or uh, collapsed by uh, default. We also have uh, lots of liberty in the various tools that you can uh, add to your diagram. So the basic behavior is very simple to, to create. And if you want to have a very complex behavior, you can also uh, do it. So if you want to have a node tool to create element, I've, sh I've uh, shown you uh, uh, a bit a complex one, which created a trainer, which created a Pokedex, a team, and added all that to the diagram because everything was not synchronized. But it's fairly easy to just create a new element. If you want to link uh, elements with an edge, it's also fairly easy. I'll show you how to do it in just a second. You can also have um, edit tools to, for example, edit the label of an element to rename it. So to create an, an edge, here I've created a tool to uh, create an edge between a trainer and a team. I've named it still a team because uh, it allows me to uh, point to a team uh, owned by another trainer and just uh, still its team uh, to be mine. I just need to configure uh, what will be the source and the target uh, of uh, the of the edge in the definition of uh, the team? Here, uh, no, in the definition of the of the edge, right here. So here we'll start from a trainer and go to a team, and to change that in my uh, tool, I just need to say that the source of the edge will now use the team pointed by uh, the target of the edge. So that's a first a behavior. And I have another one here to edit the name of a trainer. I just need to say that I will uh, change the value of the property name and use the new label to rename my trainer. So if we have a look at this tool in action, so here my trainer does not have a name. I can name it John. And you can see that the name has been updated in the diagram. It has been updated also in the Explorer. And uh, in the diagram, it has been updated at all the uh, location where this uh, property is used. Uh, in order to steal the team of uh, another uh, trainer, I would have to add for this other trainer to my diagram. So we'll see that in just a minute. So uh, you can also uh, create a more complex behavior inside of uh, your tool. For example, I've shown you you can create views for unsynchronized diagram elements. Uh, you can edit the label using uh, a much more complex uh, behavior. For example, here uh, I used it to just change the name of the trainer. But this trainer has a team, and inside of this team, there's absolutely nobody. So I can uh, edit uh, the label of the team to say that I want to add a Pokemon. So I've uh, added some uh, uh, complex uh, logic here. And if I try to add a Pokemon, the Pokemon gets added to the team, but also to the Pokedex. It adds a random Pokemon each time I execute this uh, command. So 
you can see that it does not have to be just simply uh, editing the label of uh, the element because it has a label and uh, the tool is mainly used uh, for that. You can create a complex set of uh, commands to interact with um, your uh, diagram elements. We can also uh, create drop tools to uh, define what should uh, what should happen when an element is uh, drag and dropped from the explorer or inside of uh, a diagram. So here I have my uh, trainers like Hash and Gary, which are still not uh, in the diagram, and to add them explicitly to the diagram. I've created a drop tool, which will only work if the element is uh, a trainer. It will uh, add the element, it will add its Pokedex, and for all of its team, they will be added to the diagram too. So it does not create any new element, contrary to uh, the other tool that I uh, used uh, before. It's just used to select explicitly what I want to display in this diagram. So here, if I select Ash and add it to the diagram, if I select Gary to and add it to the diagram, I can uh, use this action here to perform a full layout of the diagram and see everything here layouted, laid out, sorry. Uh, so here you can see that all the uh, other teams have been added to the diagram with new elements and uh, some new configuration. So here you can see quite clearly the difference between the freeform layout in which uh, diagram elements are just inside of a, a node and the list layout here for the Pokedex. The Pokedex is not resizable, so if I select it, I can't resize it in any direction, contrary to uh, the Pokemon that can be resized with a fixed aspect ratio. I can now test my tool to uh, steal the team of another uh, Pokemon. So it's a tool to create an edge. So when I select a diagram element, you can see here that I have uh, a small decorator to uh, start creating an edge to another element. I can create edges to uh, only a specific set of elements because I have decided uh, that it should be that way. So when I start uh, creating my edge, you can see that pretty much everything is getting faded except uh, this uh, part here. And if I select the team, you can see that now the team is related to Ash. And the team now appears under Ash, and Gary does not have a team anymore. So if I try to uh, take the team back for Gary, you can see here its team is now uh, under uh, under him in uh, the in the explorer. I've also uh, added uh, here some pokeballs. So my pokeballs here, if I go back to the definition of my diagram, here they are defined as a border node, not just a child node, and they have a specific size. So here. Uh, they are not resizable and they will use 27 by 27 uh, pixel. So I can move them around the node, but uh, I, they, they are not inside of the node. They so just uh, stay at the, at the border. But uh, you can use uh, this uh, concept of border node when uh, you want to have, uh, uh, when you want to display some uh, concept that are used as uh, a port or as uh, the frontier uh, to communicate with uh, something else. Uh, the, the image here uh, can rotate with the side used for uh, the node. So for example, here, uh, if I select it, yeah, I can make it 
so that the position will change the appearance of the uh, Pokeball. So if I go back to my diagram here. Yeah. Okay, so you see that now the Pokeball is uh, is uh, changing in the direction depending on the side of uh, the, the trainer. So if you have uh, an image with uh, uh, a specific uh, direction, it, uh, it gets useful to create uh, something uh, nice uh, to look at. We also have some options to, uh, to uh, position elements and uh, to uh, create a, a nice looking diagram uh, for the end user. So you've seen that uh, we have quite a lot of options here. So the first is uh, for uh, the full screen one, then we have uh, the fit to screen to show the whole diagram at once. You can zoom in and zoom out uh, very easily, share the diagram, download it as a SVG. You can also activate a grid to position your elements quite precisely. Yeah. If you want to uh, align the uh, nodes uh, with each other. If you want to go a bit further than that, you can also display the helper line. This way, you will be able to align your elements with uh, multiple elements at once. So here my trainer is now properly aligned with both uh, the Pokedex and the team. You can also uh, reveal all the uh, hidden or faded elements. So here, the so two Pokemon that were faded uh, can now uh, reappear normally. But you also have some options to lay out uh, elements more efficiently. So if I uh, select multiple elements like that, you can see that I have a new tool in uh, the palette to uh, align my elements or to arrange them. So for example, I can arrange them up oh, and Oh, yes, I've selected, sorry, I've just selected the container. I should just select the child elements. That's it. So I can create uh, very easily a grid with uh, all my elements. I could, for example, let's resize uh, these two elements and um, align them to top and uh i want them to be uh distribute uh, in a row and i think it would be distribute no not vertically so just if vertically yes that's it so you can resize uh precisely uh multiple elements that you select uh, manually uh, in order to create something uh, much more uh, harmonious and uh, beautiful. So be able, being able to create a grid of uh, your element uh, very quickly is uh, very nice to uh, have a more a beautiful diagram. Uh, you can also configure here I did not talk about that. Uh, the diagram, uh, the edges, sorry. You can select the appearance of the end and the beginning of uh, the edge, the style of the edge, the color, uh, things like that very easily. Okay, so uh, you've seen here pretty much uh, most of the features uh, related to uh, diagrams uh, to create uh, quite a nice looking diagram uh, very quickly. Oh, there's one thing that I did not uh, show you. When I edited the name of uh, the team to create uh, the Pokemon like that, 
I had so uh, here. No, right here. I had this behavior with uh, an edit label tool, which relies on a custom expression at Pokemon, which is not a, a concept uh, provided by Serious Web. So for this kind of advanced behavior, you can uh, add uh, Java services to your uh, server and uh, deploy them to let uh, your specifier use them to create advanced behavior in the diagram. So here I have this add Pokemon uh, service, which is just manipulating my model to create uh, a random Pokemon inside of the team and add it to the Pokedex. So this is how I've defined this, uh, this behavior. You can add, uh, you can use Java services for uh, pretty much anything in uh, Serious Web. If you want to compute uh, the appearance of an element or the behavior of a tool, you can use uh, uh, Java services and do anything you want in Java for everything. So uh, you've seen uh, a lot of what we can do with uh, Serious Web uh, diagrams, but Serious Web is not only diagrams. You can also configure and use forms trees, Gantt, deck, and portal uh, representations. So here uh, you have some uh, screenshot showing you uh, other kind of representation. So here you have the Gantt one uh, with uh, the various tasks uh, on the timeline. You also have the deck with uh, the cards like in uh, Trello. The specifier can parameterize all the behavior, what happens when you add a card, when you change its label, its description, what happens when uh, you add uh, a new task on the timeline of the Gantt representation. Uh, you can also uh, parameterize the tree representation used uh, for the Explorer. Here, uh, I've uh, customized the icon and label of uh, pretty much all my elements. You can also do the same for the form on the right, and you can create a custom form representation with tons of widgets, text field, checkboxes, um, charts also uh, inside of uh, your form. And all these representations stay synchronized. So if you rename an element in uh, a diagram, its name will be uh, its new name will be visible in all the other representations. Um, if you want to have a look at uh, an advanced example of uh, Serious Web, you can have a look at the Eclipse SysOn project. So uh, SysOn is um, a Serious Web-based project which uh, is... Uh, is used to provide some tooling for system engineering using the SysML v2 uh, concepts. So it's fully open source. You can have a look at uh, how it's built on uh, GitHub and you can have a look at uh, uh, its uh, documentation and more information on its website. And here is what a CSUN diagram looks like, for example. If you want to know more about Serious Web, you can also have a look at our blog. We are publishing a new blog post each time we are releasing a new version of Serious Web. We are releasing Serious Web every two months. So the next version will be in uh, July uh, with uh, Serious Web 2024.7.0. Uh, and uh, that's it for the presentation. Thank you for watching. And now I'll see if you have any questions for me. So is it possible to design uh, meta models? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's quite easy to design meta models. You could um, start with a studio uh, creating your domain, which is a, a meta model, and then creating 
an entity, you give it a name, you can add uh, an attribute uh, of type uh, uh, string, for example. And we also have a dedicated representation showing you uh, your entities. So you can create the meta model and the description of the representation without leaving your web browser. And uh, you can this way uh, start creating everything uh, just uh, using the web browser. Uh, what about sharing the models for use by downstream tool, XMI, import, export? OK, so you can uh, import or export the whole project. So here you have a download action, which will contain uh, both the models and the representations. And if you want to only download the model, you can also download it here. You can import uh, an existing model here. You just select a file and uh, import it. You could also customize the way uh, files are imported. If you are uh, creating your uh, serious web uh, project, for example, in Eclipse uh, Sysun, uh, they are customizing the import in order to be able to import XMI uh, files, but also uh, textual uh, CSMLV2 files. So you can import, export uh, individual model and the entire uh, project. Uh, is this a standard application or can this be embedded into a React application, for example? Okay, so uh, this one is a uh, standard application. It's a simple uh, jar, a Java jar that uh, you, you can launch uh, fairly easily. If you want to integrate it inside of uh, another application, you have uh, various possibilities. So. If you go on the Serious Web uh, GitHub repository, you could see that we have a VS Code extension in which we are embedding the front end of Serious Web inside of uh, an extension for VS Code. This way, if you have a Serious Web server up and running somewhere, you can view your representation without leaving uh, VS Code. You could also embed the uh, whole uh, application backend and frontend inside uh, of a VS Code extension, for example. Uh, one of my colleagues presented uh, a talk on this topic uh, at an Eclipse Con a couple years ago. You can look it up on uh, YouTube. You could also uh, just integrate uh, the Serious Web frontend in any uh, React application. Uh, uh, or any web-based application. It's not limited to React that you'd like. You could also go a step further. Um, Serious Web is built in two main parts. We have, first of all, all the serious components, like uh, the diagram support, the form support, and Serious Web, which is connecting all that. You could create, uh, you could, have a Java application and reuse the support for diagrams of Serious Web without reusing everything from Serious Web. If you don't want to have uh, this uh, workbench with uh, the explorers, the details view, if you don't want to have this uh, project management system, you could just reuse the diagram support in uh, an existing Java application. Can we get the Pokemon sample? It's very interesting. Uh, yes, I should uh, publish it uh, on the GitHub uh, uh, a bit later uh, to let uh, people see how I did it. Is there a plan to support and do we do in Serious Web in the future? Uh, yes, this is something that has been asked uh, in the past and uh, we, we want to support this feature uh, later. It's not planned for uh, a specific release of Serious Web because uh, the way we are working, we are releasing um, every two months and uh, we are just uh, planning in details what will uh, be in the next release. So we will start soon uh, within the team. Uh, uh, we we'll start to discuss what will be in uh, Serious Web 2024.9 for uh, September 
that uh, I don't know when uh, a support for undo redo will uh, will arrive in service web. I wonder if you are thinking of a tutorial like the Eclipse Scan 23 this year and the same bundle that you shared in the seven. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, for uh, Eclipse Con this year, uh, we have proposed some uh, presentation. Uh, what will be presented at Eclipse Con this year has not been uh, defined yet. Uh, as far as I know, the jury is uh, voting uh, for uh, the presentation. Uh, we could uh, share uh, a bundle to get started with Serious Web. It would help uh, other people. We are currently in the process of uh, writing a complete uh, documentation for uh, Serious Web with uh, a new website uh, for the documentation in order to help people get started. So uh, it will also help uh, everyone uh, understand how to to start with Serious Web and the various options to, to get started. Uh, is there support for ELK style automated node arrangement considering edges as well? Well, it's even uh, simpler than that. On the description of the diagram, you have uh, some option to uh, specify uh, the direction in which uh, the arrange all will uh, lay out your element. So when you are uh, here, this uh, arrange uh, all elements, and this is using uh, ELK. So we are using it, uh, but the JavaScript version of ELK and uh, we have some basic configuration for the layout algorithm, but we could add uh, additional options. Uh, we are using ELK for layouting the nodes, but uh, the edges are uh, the path of uh, the edges is not uh, um, computed by ELK. Uh, the CEO doc said that only diagram and created can be created from within a view, uh, well, we should update the documentation because if uh, you want to uh, create additional uh, representation, you can just go here and you can create a deck Gantt uh, directly from here. The tree representation can only be created programmatically uh, for the moment. Tons of questions. Uh, if you share your diagram with the URL link, uh, then security, uh, Serious Web does not provide any uh, security uh, on top uh, of uh, the application. So if you want to secure the access to the URL, you will have to do it uh, on, on your infrastructure. Uh, the step in the GitHub repo is not very clear. Maybe you can make a short session demo for the server side. The new documentation will arrive soon. So this is also part uh, of uh, what will be documented in uh, this uh, new uh, documentation. If I go quickly, how can you include the Java services in the application? Uh, that's uh, fairly easy. Uh, you just need to uh, define the entry point of your application. So I have an example here which uh, only contains one Java class saying start the server when uh, this class is uh, called. And inside of uh, this uh, Java project, I'm using a dependency to Serious Web Starter to uh, have access to all the features of Serious Web. And when that is done, you just need to have an implementation of uh, Java service provider to tell us uh, when and uh, which uh, Java services uh, should be included in uh, the execution of your representation. So, oh, sorry, here you can see uh, the, the interface, so it's Java service provider. 
uh, is it possible to create multiple concrete syntaxes for the same model that can run simultaneously and in sync? In sync? Um, so if it's about multiple representation, uh, yes. Uh, multiple concrete syntax for the same model. I'm not sure what you're talking about uh, for the model, but uh, you can create uh, anything in your model using, uh, for example, EMF, and then uh, you you can create tons of uh, uh, description of representations, manipulating all these uh, elements simultaneously. When I'm uh, showing this, um, this uh, diagram here i have a description of a tree representation for the explorer i have a description of a form representation for the details view these are just contributed programmatically by serious web i did not configure them here in my uh, uh, description but it's the same mechanism so you can uh, create tons of representation uh, on uh, uh, the same meta model quite easily. Is there a plan to also support table representations? Uh, tables representation uh, should probably arrive in a, a future release of Serious Web because we did uh, a prototype of uh, support for table a uh, couple months, a couple years ago. So we know to do it. Uh, we just uh, don't have the time right now to uh, do it in the Serious Web uh, project. But if uh, one of our, uh, if one of the customer uh, that uh, uh, that we have uh, requested it, we would uh, uh, invest more time on a feature like that. We just have other priorities right now. And I think that's it for uh, the question. And uh, if you have any uh, question uh, later, don't hesitate to go on uh, the Serious Web uh, GitHub repository. There's a discussion part. You can ask uh, addi additional questions there. We, we will answer uh, everything you ask. Thank you again and see you.